I'll challenge you to find anything different. Every single one of the nations that are judged are Muslim nations. So the future wars that are all going to take place, this is where it's going to be. Now, here the other night on Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck, on his chalkboard, he had the Muslim Mahdi. Now, you have to understand, Islam has an end-time theology. Did you know that? Islam has an end-time theology. Their end-time theology is, there is coming a leader out of a bottomless pit. Oh, I've read that somewhere. I'm sure I've read that somewhere. Oh, that's right. Revelation chapter 9, 11. They had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. When this Muslim Messiah, their Messiah comes, yeah, you just have to understand, their Messiahs are Antichrist. And, and, and I have it on my Facebook. So go to my Facebook, you can look at it. He had it on the chalkboard. The Muslim theology comes out of the bottomless pit, is a rider on a white horse, makes a seven-year peace covenant with Israel. Have you ever heard this stuff before? It's exactly opposite of ours. But you have to understand the entire Muslim world was set up by Satan as a counterfeit. Their Messiah is really the Antichrist. And our Messiah is their Antichrist. It's, it's phenomenal as you look through this. And again, you know what I liked about Glenn Beck? He said, don't believe what I'm saying. I don't think we ought to just believe what a wallet show bat says. I think we ought to study it for ourselves. And that's what Glenn Beck said. You study it. You do the research. You look at it. And you find it for yourself. And it's exactly in line, everything, to what the Bible teaches. Except for us, it's the Antichrist. For them, it's their Messiah. A few years ago, Ahmadinejad, the president of Iran, standing in the United Nations at the big podium, at the general council, prayed for the Muslim Messiah, the Mahdi, to come in the name of Allah. And again, part of their theology is this. There's going to be worldwide chaos and war going on. That's why, my friends, their whole system is opposite of ours. I, we would never teach our children to be suicide bombers, would we? Why would we do that? But for them... It's their only instant way of salvation. Plus, they get the 72 virgins. I'm pretty sure Usama's not having a good time with 72 virgins right now. But you look at this, it's that world, they don't care whether they die or not. Because they want their Messiah, their Mahdi, to come. And my friends, in doing a careful search... I suggest you look at it. On that program that he has, he has a Muslim, and he has Joel Richardson, who's written a book, The Islamic Antichrist. Again, I think we need to study it, but the spirit of Antichrist absolutely, unequivocally denies the Father and the Son. Now, my friends, there's one last place I want to take you. So, in the book of Daniel, we have this fantastic prophecy, Daniel chapter 9. But as we go on, it begins talking about the Antichrist. And one of the things that it says about the Antichrist, he, one of his titles is the willful king. Then the king in Daniel eleven thirty six shall do according to his own will. And she, he shall all exalt and magnify himself above every God. What has Satan always desired? Satan desire, has always desired to be worshipped, hasn't he? And my friends, the scripture goes on to say in verse 37, he shall regard neither the God of his fathers nor the desire of women. Islam does not care about women. In Saudi Arabia, you can't drive if you're a woman. I've traveled through many uh, Muslim countries. I have lots of Muslim friends. At night, you don't see women out. You see the guys out, but not the women. In Afghanistan, they wouldn't even let them go to school. They... In fact, Mohammed taught this, a woman has half the mental capability of a man. And that's why Islam teaches it's absolutely all right to, to beat your wife, as long as you beat her from the neck down because you don't want to mess up her face. Now, the scripture goes on to say, 
that this coming Antichrist attacks, and let me read it for you, thus he shall act against the strongest fortress. And that's found in Daniel chapter 11, verse 39. Who is the strongest fortress? Who's the strongest country of the world? It's us, right? Aren't we the strongest country in the world? And my friends, here's what I believe. The Antichrist doesn't control everything. Otherwise, who would he be fighting? If he controlled everything, there'd be no reason to fight, right? There are people that he's going to be fighting. One of them is going to be the strongest fortress. This nation, America, was a special nation from its inception. A, a country that devoted itself to the Judeo-Christian principles. And my friends, we still have a part to play in that, don't we? In fact, the Bible says that we are to occupy until he comes. How many believe that a righteous voice could be heard in America again? How many believe that we can return to the God of our fathers that made this nation great? And it's done when we seek the Lord, when we pray, when we get involved. And my friends, we're coming up. It's beginning again on a, a national election. Why? And I don't care about the political parties. That political party's been in bed with each other for years and years. You know what I want to see? I want to see righteous leadership in this country of people who believe in the Constitution of the United States of America and believe in the Christian principles that founded this nation that we can rise again and be the greatest nation on the world, standing in face of the evil that there is in this world. Amen? Let's stand. It's good to know the Word of God, my friends. And I have great news. You know who wins? Jesus Christ wins. And so let's pray right now. We thank you for this truth. And Lord, we pray that we would be like the Bereans, that we would study to show ourselves approved, Lord, that we would equip the saints with your truth, with your word, that we'd not be deceived, Lord, that we could boldly proclaim what's going on in this world. Because as it gets darker and darker in this world, more and more people, as your word says, their hearts are going to fail them for fear. But for us, Lord, we thank you that you call us when we see these things begin to come to pass to lift our heads. We have the answers. We know the truth. And so, Lord, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit. Now, one last prayer that I have with everyone. There isn't anything that's more important than you being on fire for the Lord right here, right now, and only you know whether you are or not. I want to tell you something. The Bible's real clear. The Lord doesn't care for lukewarm. He wants you to be hot for him. And so I want to give you an opportunity to pray and rededicate your life to the Lord. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I do believe that you are the Messiah, the Christ, the son of the living God. And Lord, I give you my heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to walk in your ways. In Jesus' name. Amen.